speaking of bearing witness, this is known as a school. This is what I call a school. Right? The crows represent truth. The trees represent the pillars of the earth. The leaves about their congress. So with all the cells of our body, with all the reaches of the stars, and of our heritage, and of our memory, and of our destiny. The full sun of the value by birth of the coordination, cooperation, and correspondence of all the cells of our body with all the regions and systems and creatures of the earth, and of the heavens and the earth of our birth from here to eternity. This is what modern society calls a school. Pretty conventional, right? Pretty normal. No one's going to call you crazy for calling this minimum security penitentiary a school. How many children have walked in and out of that door over the last 20 years that the school has probably been here? Right? Probably, what, maybe 200,000? Maybe half a million? This is the school. They walk through to get here. I walked when I was a child through doors just like these. You would actually walk up to them September 5th or so, just after Labor Day. These are the institutional hallways that they walk through. You got some awards there for various achievements. You got some team sports going on there. Look at the fluorescent lights. You can see the reflection of the birds in the background. I can, I'm not sure if you can. School and nature transposed over one another. Right? What do you think? What's a better school? What would you trust more? Where'd that dog go? Elwin! Elwin! Come on! Oh, he's found something. Um, I would go and look on a register, see my name and what teacher and what friends I would be with. You know, trying to find out some compensation for this Herculean duress of having to spend 200 and some odd days of the year, seven or eight hours a day at this institution, where I'd have to ask somebody if I could go to the bathroom. You get 15 minutes for recess, maybe, 20 minutes, maybe 45 minutes for lunch, to play on the grounds, on the compound, as it were. But no one calls this a cult, right? Haha, <laughs> this isn't a cult. Because it's popular. Everyone does this. Cults are things, as someone once told me, they're not popular. Kind of ironic, isn't it? That someone wouldn't know how to make a distinction between cults and anything else that isn't a cult simply beyond the constraints of how popular it is. I'll let you think about that. That little bit of irony. Might as well be chaining kids to these bars. There are greater bars than metal in this world. They are the constraints that people suffer from for the rest of their lives. But there's the compensation of having the native genius in order to break those constraints, to challenge them, to question them, to modify our freedom with being patient with the constraints we become used to because if you break all your constraints, if you change your entire diet in a day, you flood your system with psychological and chemical toxins that your body can't handle. So, moderation, steady. Just If I'm moving in the right direction, I don't mind moving there steadily. One step, one video at a time. I just like to know I'm moving in the right direction. Gotta keep him from crossing the road. Hey, hey, come here. Sit. Okay, let's go. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, my friend. He's not on a leash because my friend locked me out of the house. I just managed to get him through the cat door, take him for a leashless walk. There's a beautiful sunset that I'm going to show to you. And just all my friends. Come on.
Wish I could give you a close-up. And this is the, these are the residences of the penal colonies that we live in. Just pretend you're going back in time from the future and you're an anthropologist. So we're going to meet some of the members of the penal colony here. You know, keep an open mind. Be kind, but be observant. Come on. Sit, sit. Open. Let's go. So we get our mail. We have fire service for when houses burn. Stoves erupt in a spontaneous combustion. The various alchemies of the mothers or fathers at work over dinner or lunch. Three thousand other things on their minds. Someone is advertising an in-law suite. I wish I could be transported a thousand feet up in the air on the back of a giant bird right now because it'd be such a wonderful view. Hey, let's go there with me. All right, we've got to use some animal medicine. Put on your eagle mask. Let's fly a little bit higher, a little closer to the sun. Hey! Get a bird's eye view. Get man's eye view through a bird. Man who is in command of nature. sliver of the sun over there is it just goes farther away over the flatlanders that we live on now since I've exposed the viewer to this atmosphere of the penal colony let's say what do you think about flatlanders now does it serve or undermine the penal colony think of the world as global. There's an eagle over there, just a, a fake eagle in the wind, moving its wings, never getting anywhere at all. I was give you a closer look at those people sitting in the window. I can't really film their house with their something. Can they? Owen! Come on! Come on! Look at those clouds. Let's go. We have luckily, as I anticipated, found a little causeway here. I think we're trailing off as far as profound things to say. Look at the asphalt spread over the native land. It leaches chemicals day in and day out. We're standing on what amounts to one small sliver of literally millions of miles of this stuff all over the world, on top of which we run our um, cathedrals of fouling our, our own oxygen supply, and we pour, of course, massive amounts of our money into these cars, most of which goes to funding wars and banks and the people in charge of keeping us free and imprisoned as though they share a kind of equivalency or a sun of freedom that eclipses any knowledge of the captivity we experience relative to what, the way we used to live. You get my drift. This, of course, harkens back to the purpose of the minimum security penal colonies we were just looking at. So thanks. Really. I mean, you're doing the world a whole lot of surface just listening to me. Listening to yourself, because to listen to someone you have to listen to yourself. And I trust and I respect that if you don't like what you're hearing, then that's fine. There's going to be very few people who want to listen to it. Oh, and let's go. I mean, let's face it, right? You're going to eventually hit this place in your mind that goes, well, what do I do with that information? What's the point of knowing it? Right? Could one be so in prison that there's no point in hearing about freedom? Without freedom, you wouldn't be alive. You have lots of it. The question is not of whether we are free, but of our conscious capacity for experiencing its full value. 
question is not whether we live in paradise, but of our conscious capacity for nourishing our conscious capacity for the full value of the son of man and nature alike, that of every corresponding dimension of our being. You can hear more of this at a living school at cosmicheaven.blogspot.ca. I am Rain Griffin. This is Alwyn, signing off. <laughs>